Bullets from a jimpy fan out to create a cone of fire. By interlocking these cones from the SF line, it creates what is known as a beaten zone. This is an area that the enemy will find impossible to move through. You may wonder why we know that these weapons are going to fire when we actually get them set up. That is because before we go on any mission, we will take all the weapons that we're going to use and test fire them to make sure they're in perfect working order. The baseline for the operation is now in place. Supporting the machine guns are a battery of 81mm mortars, already locked on to the escape route. Down on the beach, members of boat troop guard the exfil point. The rest of the squadron can now move forward to the target. Four kilometres away in the wood overlooking the target, Alec waits for the squadron to arrive. Before they get there, he will build a scale model of the area using materials that are close to hand. This will help Eddie and the squadron's officer in command formulate a detailed plan. It's vital that the model accurately reflects the surrounding area. We carry a model kit with us. And you know, a model kit is made up of, as you can see here, ribbons. We've got various bits of Fablon card, each with one side uh, clear so we can put in any additional positions that might need to be put in. Okay, it's important that we do this. This is approximately a square kilometre around the target area. The target's located away to the southwest, of course. We're away to the north at the moment. Uh, building in the features, you know, because there's nothing worse than guys coming to look at a model which isn't to scale or doesn't have the correct relief. Here we can see the river coming to the south here. The ground rises away from the river, so this is what we're building up at the moment. So we're just going to put a wood in here in a minute and then we'll continue back. The, t the target area itself is obviously down here and we'll put the buildings in there very shortly. Alec has gone to incredible lengths to get the model right. What couldn't be seen from the OP has been mapped during the close target recce. This way, the squadron will get an all-round bird's-eye view of our target. If we don't build a model, you know, you you're in danger of leading people into an attack blind. You know, uh, you can tell them anything you want, but it takes a very uh, able bunch of guys to remember every single detail without showing them previously on a, on a model. And there should be no reason why there is not a model available. If you've got a good model and it's well prepared, then you can show everyone exactly how the land lies and what the target looks like on the ground. If you try to explain that without a model, You'll be there all day. The squadron arrive at the final rendezvous. With them now is the OC, the officer in command. He's ultimately in charge of the squadron and will decide if or when they go in. Eddie's role as the air troop commander is to brief the squadron and present an assault plan. The first thing I'm going to do when I get the rest of the squadron into our position, I'm going to show them and run through the model with them so that each person has a general idea of what the ground looks like around the target area. This will be specifically orientated towards the OC, the boss. I'll let him know exactly what's going on. There's a road running north-south. There's a small track which reads into the target area running west to east. This is the road that's used when they're changing over the sentries down at the target, yeah? Every 24 hours the sentries come down the road, change over, back out. The target is not heavily guarded, but they have an extra danger to contend with. <laughs> Nearby is an army base that could mobilise a quick response force, QRF. Let's go, come on, let's go! Keep moving, come on. The army camp is about three kilometres from target, so we've got to get in there quick, get the job done, and out of there before they can react to what's happening at the target. Eddie has identified a blind spot on our target. The squadron will approach from this area and split into two, entering from the front of the building on two sides. After having an eyes on the target himself, the OC is happy with the plan and leaves Eddie to fill in the details. 
Okay guys, we've uh, just been over the plan with Eddie. Uh, I'll hand you over in a second and he can go through the detailed tasks with you. At this stage, the OC is going to defer to me because I've been on the ground, had a good look at the area, so basically he is going to then defer to me and I will give the orders for the main assault. Right, okay, lads. Eddie assigns everyone a role. Elements of mobility and boat troop are back at the exfil point providing covering fire. He posts two of the air troop on the road overlooking the track to our target. Your task, to cover that road in case we get held up at the target area and the, their QRF comes in. Start taking them out. Take the 66 with you to take out any vehicles that's driving down that track. The SAS use lightweight anti-tank weapons to up their firepower. The Law 66 is widely used. It's a one-off use weapon that is extremely effective against soft skin targets like unarmored vehicles. A trooper may carry several, but he has to know exactly how to operate the weapon system. Whilst an exercise once with a unit which will remain nameless, as the person was opening the weapon, it was jamming. So stupidly, he took it, placed it on his knee, held it here, and cocked the weapon. As he cocked it, he pressed the firing button at the same time. The weapon went off, the actual high explosive round went up in the air, but the back blast from this weapon chopped the guy's leg off. Very, very dangerous weapon. Because it's small, it's easy to turn around, to point it at people. Place the weapon on the shoulder, aim at the target, bang. Take the weapon, throw it away, because it's no use to you anymore. The Law 80 is heavier and will cut through the armour of main battle tanks at a range of 500 metres. But the bigger the launcher, the greater the risks to the men nearby. Anyone who has stood in the rear blast area of this weapon within 20 to 30 metres will be severely injured. It's a recoilless weapon and all the propulsion from the weapon comes out the rear. So you must make sure that's what he's doing when he's taking the covers off. He checks to the rear to make sure there's none of his guys behind him. Back at the woods, Eddie continues the briefing for our fictitious assault. During the attack itself, two men will stay at the OP. They're going to keep eyes on the target while we're moving in. Air troop, who have the best knowledge of the target, will lead the rest of the squadron in. I will lead you forward, down, through the wood, into the west side of the target. As soon as we get the go-ahead for the boss, then we we'll quickly come around from both sides and make entry through into the target. We want to be here, set up, ready to go in exactly 40 minutes from now. So get your gear, get your weapons, check your weapons, all the normal kit. Be here, formed up, ready to march. Let's go. Each of the guys who are going to do the op will then feed through the observation post so that every single person prior to the assault has a good eye on the target area. Don't forget your model kit there, yeah? The squadron will leave their Bergens in the wood, under guard. They can now advance to FIBA. FIBA, forward edge of the battle area. Basically, where all the fighting takes place. It's a slow, silent approach to the target. They put up defensive positions to cover the withdrawal. Speed and surprise will give them the edge. That and an impressive selection of weaponry. The M16 is the regiment's standard assault weapon. Each trooper carries five 30 round magazines and 300 to 400 rounds of extra ammunition. He may also have a 203 grenade launcher attached to the weapon. Every soldier carries a pistol as backup, either a Browning 9mm or a Sig Sauer. The Mini Me is a lightweight machine gun that fires 800 rounds a minute. They'll also take hand grenades. The point of the operation is not to kill as many of the enemy as possible, 
but to abduct the subject and survive the